If you have some little behalf for an endo probe, you should follow his rules, which are not so difficult to remember, and try to be a part of that performance. And I the Prabhu was telling many many times, you can sing that melody, you can sing this melody, you can sing 20 melodies per minute, you can sing one melody per hour, you can sing in this rhythm, that rhythm, if you know chanting Shudhanam, everything is just zero, almost zero. So we should focus on that. Are we really chanting for Krishna? Are you really wants to satisfy Krishna's senses? Are you really calling Krishna for help? Please help me. Like I in the Prango, anyone can see. There are so many videos on YouTube, everywhere. How he was putting his whole heart in chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So we should follow in his footsteps. We should follow his example. And little by little, or maybe a little more than a little, we should make advancement in that art of glorifying Krishna, glorifying his associates, and offer our heart at the lotus feet of holy name of Krishna. So we need to present 24 Kirtan, that this is something which is not easy going program. But devotees should feel that they need to dedicate themselves. That this is, they, they, they should not take this cheaply, staying in the holy down, in the down, down, staying under the care of Shishini Taisachi Sutta and I end up still because he is still present here and take this chip you know, they should never do like that they should take this very seriously and do uh, their seva very responsibly be always on time chanting Hare Krishna always keeping a Kandanam Kirtan going this is, you know Everyone who is staying here in the national responsibility. He made a very, um, very strong point about how this is a 24 hours Akhanda Nam Kirtan party, and which means that the holy name should go on 24 hours non stop. You see, he said that it's not just a Kirtan party, you are not here just for doing Kirtan. There should be 24 hours the holy name should go on in the temple which means there shouldn't be any stop and uh, all the devotees should be on guards with um, understanding the importance of keeping the name going 24 hours without stop so that was that's the most important point that has struck me personally and uh, that's what i i mean i try to do and also try to uh, speak about that's one thing and uh, so if like 24 hours it has to go on so practically speaking like details specifically how it works like there are shifts like there's 10 to 1 night 1 to 4 30 night 4 to 7 7 to 10 morning like that so devotees on one particular shift like suppose you say 7 to 10 and uh, in the morning 7 to 10 shift there is Darshanati, there is Guru Puja, there is Bhagavatam class. So the devotees who are on that shift should make sure that during the temple programs the holy name is still going on, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is still going on, being chanted on their beads. And uh, as soon as uh, there is some opportunity, like as soon as Prabhupada goes out of the temple at 7.40, so immediately, like without any delay, without any stop, immediately the Kirtan should start, the holy name should start, there shouldn't be any, any gap, Akhanda, Akhanda means like it should be continuous. So your japa should go on and as soon as the it's where the temple is vacant, Prabhupada goes out, then you should start Kirtan. Then Bhagavatam class starts. So immediately you should again start chanting Hare Krishna. So there shouldn't be any any gap in our chanting of Mahamantra. At least 
every devotee on that particular shift should take the responsibility that okay this is my shift and I should make sure that the Mahamantra is going on continuously there, sh there is no no gap or uh, there shouldn't be any khanda no stopping of the Mahamantra so it goes on and then as soon as the Bhagavatam class gets over then uh, yeah immediately you should start Kirtan then 10 o'clock like that then the devotees from the other shift come and they are expected to come as far as we have understood that they should come five minutes before their shift and uh, be there ready with their setup and uh, there should be a transition of the kirtan the kirtan is going on the seven to ten devotees are doing and these devotees uh, as soon as it's like 10 o'clock these devotees should start kirtan and these devotees stop so there is like a smooth transition going on you know there, there's no again there is no stoppage of kirtan no khanda akhanda kirtan means like again the holy name this flows like it just goes on then 10 to 1 then 1 to 4 4 to 7 so like that so everyone has to be on guards that uh, the kirtan shouldn't stop the holy name shouldn't be stopping 24 hours as much as possible we should try and that's that's a mission like and when we have uh, this type of understanding then uh, we be, we are more alert and more attentive to the holy name if this principle is gone, the Akhanda principle is gone, then it, it just becomes slack. It just becomes like the whole mood becomes a little slack. So, so that's the most important point that he always used to hammer and uh, stress. That is Akhanda Nam Ketan Party. And I'm trying so hard since the past 24 years to keep it going. And please, like, please assist me in um, keeping this uh, going. Ketan Party forever. So this is the most important point so it's a group effort and what I see now is it's very little of that very little of that maybe because the reason is that the road is they not getting trained to understand to understand that by group effort if you follow the if you follow the mood of the leader then we can produce some relationship between the leader and us and if you are able to satisfy the leader of the Kirtan of the Harinam Sankirtan performance then, then he, he is pleased and then the Bhava is he's, he's more inspired to do the Kirtan and one thing is pushing another thing The meaning of Sankirtan itself implies that uh, it's like a group chanting a congregation a gathering of devotees who are sitting there chanting Krishna's name and uh, we are collectively calling out to Krishna so that was his understanding his, his mood was not that there is one person sitting and uh, you know kind of like it's him who is like performing or something the mood here is that um, one Vaishnava leads He's singing, he's chanting Mahamantra, he's calling out to Krishna and he has a I mean he has a particular mood through which he's doing that. And everyone else is assisting him. So it's like a group. It's not like just individual. So when uh, so we know that Krishna is there, Radha Radha Shamsundar is there and we are all sitting here and like we are as a group we are calling out to Krishna and that's Sankirtan. Everyone getting together and chanting for Krishna's pleasure. So um he, always, he used to say that um, like usually um, in outside world you see like these professional chanters who are there, they sit on a stage they, the, on stage they are sitting and they are facing the audience and audience is facing them and they are chanting so it's just like the mood is something like the people who are chanting they are the host and the people who, who have gathered the public who has come they are the guests and you are like doing some kind of performance you are chanting, you are doing some kirtan but his uh, mood, which he always has to um, project and always has to teach 
and display was that um, everybody who comes to the temple, everyone who is coming to the temple are the host. Means the only guest there are Radha Sham Sundar, Krishna Balram and uh, Gornita. Like uh, we face them, like nothing like um, the public is not facing us and we are not, like you know like it's not that mood. Everyone is facing the deities. When, uh, when we are doing Kirtan, it's not like our individual focus or oh, Krishna and like you know like uh, we should also make sure that the people public like it's it's a preaching it's a preaching program like engaging people in chanting Krishna's name like we said it's like a Sankirtan group effort like uh, like the outside people are not like the guests who are coming they are also the hosts so we should it's our service to also engage them in chanting like in our own way like inspire them like lovingly or like by a smile or something just encourage them to chant so that keeps our that preaching mood also going it's not just like a focus on our own individual you know bhajan or something and, uh, that we are like all chanting together sankirtan so I have to follow that principle where we should make sure that everyone in the temple room is chanting like no one is just like sitting there doing nothing huh? so we should be fired up and by seeing us like devotees as, as soon as you see someone fired up you also feel like enthusiastic and you should try to engage the outside people who are coming also like we have to uh, help the person who is uh, sitting and singing there and one more thing that he told in that regard is that um, we shouldn't uh, consider ourselves qualified to sit and sing there I mean in the sense that we sit and lead the kirtan like the mood I mean it's like what qualification do I have to sit and lead the group of Vaishnavas who are sitting you know I mean Vaishnavas they are all I mean all I mean all elevated much more higher than me and like they have my eternal masters so what qualification do I have to sit there on the you know and lead all the Vaishnavas into glorifying Krishna so we should always feel ourselves unqualified to do that so we sh our mood should be that and then he used to say that but if someone asks you to sing then you accept it as a service that I'm getting the service to do so in that mood you can sing so that's also one more thing that he taught now this principle it's like you know it's like for personal application so I think it's required training constant training on the new devotees are coming to the Kirtan party and we should think in those terms that we actually giving example for the next generation of devotees who will come. In 1975, Prabhupada very specifically said about that, uh, this temple, that in this temple I want 24 kids. So he was giving every single thing about how important it is Harinam Sankirtan, how we should behave during Kirtan, Kirtan etiquette, who can lead the Kirtan. If someone is not chanting 16 rounds, he has no right to sit before harmony. He said to one devotee, and I was witnessing that, I was witnessing his words. So, someone should be dressed properly, someone should have tilak on the forehead. This is, these things are external things, but very important, because we represent Prabhupada, we represent our spiritual masters. And by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is here in Purush, of the Yagya, Sankirtan Yagya, we will be, we will be able to have text for chanting our Japa. And when we have text for Japa, we don't have text for Maya. Very simple. So that understanding was somehow transferred to my dull brain by the mercy of Shri Patayana that by this Harinam Sankirtan process we can really very quickly, especially in the down, advance in spiritual life and we can have many spiritual realizations we can have 
many chances to see you know our special advancement comes speeding up. And then you start to think about more advanced things in your spiritual life. Aindra Prabhu's standard was so high, like, I mean, his understanding and his um, uh, point was that um, it's a yagya. You're like going there for a yagya. So, everything that's gonna distract you from the yagya, I mean, like, like suppose you have to like go, you know, fresh up, go to the bathroom, do things, whatever. You just do it before or you do it after. But you know that you have your slot of doing yagya. And in that slot, uh, you should just be focused. There shouldn't be like, uh, oh, now I have to go and like, you know, drink water. Oh, now I have to like go and pass water. I just have to do some things. So like, uh, he, he didn't encourage these things. But still like, uh, practically speaking, like when I was on one to four, like sometimes alone, few times. So at one particular point, at least I found myself that, okay, I have to like, you know, like go and attend some emergency emergency call, major's call and then I'm like what what will I do now because if I leave and uh, the, uh, the holy name will stop so I just like uh, I mean uh, I just went here because if you are if you are um, sincere then you get intelligence also how to you know how to adjust the balance so like I just like went to the entrance of the temple I mean it's the whole temple the Khandanam is going on I was just chanting 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 and then I just like called the watchman you know chanting Loudly. Chanting the Mahamantra, I called the watchman and watchman came and said and then I was I just uh, chanting, I just like with my expressions I told him that you have to chant and then he started chanting and then when he started chanting I said keep chanting, I am coming back in a few minutes <laughs> and then he went and he kept chanting and I, you know, but it's, this shouldn't be on records actually like wow. Aindra Prabhu, I, I was hearing that even if he had to attend nature's call, he, he wouldn't go even if he was thirsty, there is no question of being thirsty, but even if he, there was some emergency, he wouldn't go. He would just like, no, I have to be here. Like his, his understanding was when you are in that, doing that yagya, you are just like focused mind, uh, intelligence, false ego, everything. Like no distraction. Like I remember once we were doing Kirtan in the evening. Around it was like 6.30, just half an hour before Gaurarati. And, um, and then the Kirtan was going like all fired up with his usual mood and temperament. And I was playing Karthas just beside him. And um, uh, like 15 minutes or 10 minutes before the Gaurarati, all these pilgrims who are there, they started like pouring in the temple and they they were like practically, I was I was facing um, Prabhupada, facing them, uh, putting my back towards Mataji's. And all this the huge crowd of pilgrims, they just like started walking in front of Radha, Radha Sham and like I was getting hit by their legs or like just getting brushed by their legs or something and in my usual like um, like I was a brahmachari and I'm like Mataji is touching me you know like I mean like it shouldn't happen and I, 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 instead of like continuing to play kartas just for a moment I got distracted and I was like I just like turned behind to tell them just like keep a distance and it was just like a 10 minutes before the Gaurarti Kirtan, all fired up. And I just like, for a moment, I stopped the Kartals and like, I just like, Narayan Prabhu got all upset. He just looked at me and he said like, focus, focus on the Kirtan. Like your mind, intelligence, false ego, everything here. Like, just be oblivious to everything else. So that was like a lesson. Like, I mean, uh, you just have to be above your bodily concept of life. And, you know. and he was very eager to explain to me so many things like Ainda Prabhu, uh, I have a question. Can I can I take prasanna to your clock? I just is doing my seva. What I should do? Ainda Prabhu said, How I, how you can take prasanna to your seva? So there are many conversations. Ainda Prabhu, about Harinam Sankirtan, about Holy Name, about this, about that. The devotees who are staying on the 24 Kirtan facility, we should hear that as much as possible. And in this way, understand the mood of Ainda Prabhu and following his footsteps.
and uh, the most important is, thing is that we are keeping eye on Akanda Namkirtan. Music is always secondary, but music also is, should be as good as possible. No, not just like, you know, I like this devotee, I will play very nicely Danka for him, and this devotee, uh, not so much, I will not play such a good. No, always we should give our best in playing the Danka, Kartels, Gong, even this person is singing with Uterian Motors. Because maybe after some time he will understand his mentality. He will be introspective enough to understand that I am doing that for myself. And he will be humbled by this mentality. How long it will take depends upon his sincerity and honesty. Like you were asking me uh, how was that um, there are different rules for each shift. So morning 7 to 10 shift or um, evening 7 to 10 shift or any shift where there is like uh, like you are not doing kirtan you are like you have to do some japa because of some temple programs in between. So he used to say that you don't count that japa in your uh, personal quota of japa. That goes as a seva of that shift. Like if someone is on 7 to 10 shift he shouldn't think okay I want to be on 7 to 10 shift so I can finish half my japa there and then I just have half japa left and I'll do that later, nothing like that. He said that that japa shouldn't be counted, it, it should go in your quota of service, service that you do. That's your 3 hours, like everyone is uh, his uh, idea and uh, he said that uh, each kirtan party devotee should do 6 hours kirtan and chant 64 rounds. That's the ideal standard that he expected, that's the, the most ideal. Once he said that every Kirtan devotee should chant 6 hours Kirtan and do 64 hours Japa and that's the standard I expect. Yeah. So for 1 to 4 night shift, uh, 1 to 4.30 actually. So he used to say that you go to sleep at 7.30 in the evening, wake up at 12.30 and he said that if you do that <clears throat> then you get sufficient rest, you, you won't feel tired and then after 1 to 4.30 shift you attend the whole morning program. He, uh, there was no provision for those who were on 1 to 4.30 shift to skip the morning program. He said if you sleep from 7.30 in the evening till 12.30, midnight, half an hour after midnight, you are sufficiently rested and even according to Ayurveda they say that uh, the sleep that you take from 8 to 12 at night, you get double the benefit of that rest. So you are sufficiently rested and then he said that, he used to say that you do your night shift 1 to 4.30, Attend Mangalarti, you chant, you do your Darshanati Guru Puja class, and then if you are tired, then you can take half an hour, one hour rest after that. So the only shift that was exempt from attending Mangalarti was 10 to 1 night shift. And that too he used to say that, but they still have to come for the Bhagavatam class. He said that if they are on 10 to 1 shift, they go to sleep by 1.30, uh, they have to wake up by 7.30 and be there for Bhagavatam class. That was, uh... In uh, four to seven day, um, we usually sing like like Yaman or Malkosh or these are like evening rags, you know. And if you if people know any rag, you know they can sing because if they know, you know many times. See, there are a lot of uh, of. Uh, 24 hours Kirtan in Vrindavan as well as Mayapur. In Gauri Vaishnav, there are a lot of, not just Iskon. And many places they follow this whole rag thing. But uh, but in in Iskon Vrindavan, it's not like a big thing, you know, like yeah, like if you feel like if you can sing, then sing. If you can't sing, then but many many places they they get really like upset that you're not singing the right rag or anything, you know. It's, it, it is nice to decorate and it's nice to do all the beautification, but it's an offering. It depends on how you want to give, you know. So many times I've seen and many times I do also. I close my eyes and I, you know, you know, meditate and uh, that I, 
hardly saw with iron bro hmm. it means mostly i saw that at night shift when he's at like he's like doing his things you know and he's like but in a, in 47 shift he was there with every single one of you he would look at every single devotee hmm. and try to bring them back whoever is spacing out hmm. he would shout whoppers ganta everything mudangas his his attention was on everybody during his kirtan so that's one thing that is very good to like for a kirtan leader to see, see. It means not only for a peak kirtan or yeah. at all times it's good to like see the mood the mood is okay now like you know doing going to do kirtan so you have to like keep everybody together hmm. you know it's not like okay like like let's just you know if you like do whatever i feel like and then they they will follow mm. if they are not good madanga players they will not be able to follow mm. if they are good madanga players they will follow you know i was very spaced out most of us were very spaced out but i would talk about myself very spaced out so i got hammering many times to just look around here and there mm. it's so much it's so so much fun to just watch people you know <laughs> like four to seven shift final shift iron bru is there Kirtan is rocking, and you see these people going crazy, yeah. and then and then you see, and you you're like, you know, for a moment you're playing karpal, and then you look, and you're like looking at them. So it you are spaced out, you know, yeah. you're not in the kirtan, and yeah, I sure. would. He bring you back. He bring you back. Hmm. Yeah, and that that's what distinguishes this um, Vrindavan kirtan from all the other kirtan. Now everyone has caught up with same mood, more or less. I don't know how much, like. Once there was one devotee who was playing mridanga for Indra Prabhu, and um, Indra Prabhu was like, "You have to get fired up." And he was like, uh, "He told Indra Prabhu that I mean, uh, I, I I can't I can't do more than this, you know. We were just brought up in I mean, we we what what did he say? That um, uh, we grew up doing just casual kirtan. He used this word casual kirtan." Casual means you know just kirtan you know, and I never got all upset like he said casual kirtan. He said we are not doing casual kirtan here, we are doing kick ass kirtan. So I mean his mood was like you kick uh, you know uh, the whole uh, laziness, the whole spaced out mentality, you just kick the ass out of it you know. I know who used to say to play it on beat, not off beat, with wampers and ganta, always on beat. So if the kirtan is going, uh, he said. He said because many times people tend to play offbeat. But if 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 there is like, I've seen kirtan leaders play wampers offbeat when there's like kirtan is going fast and they're like you know they put a little flare, but it's just not one beat. It's two three beats together. So that's that I feel is okay. But but when when you're playing just one beat, then don't play it off. Remembrance when I end up having to show me how to play the gong. We don't we don't play gong by putting gong on the floor. We keep gong in the hand and we play. He even make this stick. I have this stick still with me. He put on the end of the stick barbana thread. He covered with the glue which is using for the wood. And this stick is still with me, which was made by Indra Prabhu. In most, in traditional kirtan parties and kirtans outside Iskand, the singer is the leader, the main leader, and the the kartal player is the second man hmm. in charge, and then the mridanga is the third man in charge. And the wampers and the ganta are like the side, like yeah. You know, sometimes they are not there; they are there. Doesn't matter. But these are the kartal mridanga, mm -hmm. and mostly the kartal will control. But in in Ayurveda's kirtan, in 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 Vrindavan, in our temple, we find mridanga are the leaders, second man in charge, and then the kartal. <coughs> See with with Ayurveda, I've seen him starting a kirtan with double beat. Mm. I've seen him starting a kirtan with half speed. It, you know, it's all all different moods. Yeah. And many times I've seen him uh, taking somebody's kirtan and just continuing that 
sometimes he make he takes the same raga and sings it elaborates on that and sometimes he sings his own uh, hmm. melody which he thinks is is, is pr appropriate at that moment uh, you know Ainuru focused more on Kartal play he would he would a kirtan a leader like not a kirtan leader it's anybody joining the ashram they actually they need to know how to play kartal mm. that's that's the minimum he said that you know you need to know if not then i would say you go into another ashram how we should start our music education we start from the kartals kartals teaches you how loud kartal should be what is the speed what is the rhythm tal and texture it means if Vidanga is doing the high Kartas are doing the high if Vidanga is doing this Kartas are doing this so this are different textures Kartas so Kartas are teaching Kartas teaching these four things if you're learning play play karta first or clap your hand first and so that you get the beat properly first you know beat is very important the tal you know and then with tal comes the rhythm these two things is very important if you get that then you can move on from kartal to to madanga you know and and like uh, if you don't know how to play sit a little far away mm -hmm. play softly keep always be aware and folk on always keep attention like who who is the main kirtan who is the main kartal leader leading yeah. yeah so you follow the kartal leader and just play softly it's not like oh yeah you know many times you will come and they're like yeah i know everything you know <laughs> and they mess things up and they speed up and slow down you know? mm. so kartas is very important but more important is midanga one time I end up telling me, if you're alone on the shift, you should play Muridanga. If there are two devotees, they should be Muridanga and Kartans. If there are three devotees, then they can be Harmonium, Muridanga and Kartans. Muridanga is the heart of the Kirtan. One thing even I never said to many devotees and they told me that, that should not practice during kirtan. You should practice, you know, your other times. During kirtan, don't practice. <laughs> but like, we come and we just, uh, even if you don't know, if you don't know and you're trying to learn, so it's better to like be quiet and do it on the side. Not like, you know, just be loud and, you know. And it's, it's, it is good if you can help each other and let them know that oh yeah this is you know this is how the tal is follow yeah. this you know things like that and what Ainuru said in front of me is that that all slots everybody should sing half an hour you know it should not be more than half an hour you know it's, it's like half an hour is a good time for somebody to do you know? somebody wants to do less than that it's okay but like, if somebody is doing kirtan, it should not exceed half an hour. You know? And uh, you know, sometimes I I have I have seen people do it for a longer time. Yeah, you know? and and I'm sure Ainupu must have told them that. You know, but that's the thing. There's no hard fast rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? and sometimes you feel like, and everybody is there to like. Be with you, you know, yeah. support the kids and yeah. everyone's into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially during Kartik or post Purnima festival, we should give chance to lead to those who are nice devotees and they're just visiting. Maybe they came after 10 years and then they nice kid and he also let him play, let him express his affection for Krishna. The devotees who are on the 24 kitten party, they should be like servants. That's why I'm saying there's no hard and fast rule to sing kirtan. Mm. The mood is very important. You know, it depends on what you're you're offering. It's not it's not it's not about 
you know how many preparations you are making you know it, it depends on your heart what you're giving so that's that's what I understood you know and that is what people uh, get from I do it's not just it's not just musical uh, you know enlightenment yeah it is more like spiritual enlightenment you actually feel his mood mm. and then you actually meditate in that mood yeah Kirtan or Sankirtan or Hainam Sankirtan, Sankirtan Yoga is an expression of our love for Krishna. He said, he said once he had a dream of uh, Srila Prabhupada where um, um, where Srila Prabhupada um, told him, inspired him that uh, it's good that you are doing 24 hours Kirtan here, now you spread it all over the world. 24 hours program so you would uh, I mean I, w I was seeing how he would inspire different devotees that he should hold 24 hours program 24 hours Kirtan program at least for one day two day three day so, so that's the process so should chant Hare Krishna and make everyone chant and that should be the kind of mission that we have in our life we should like always chant Hare Krishna and two hours apart to Kirtan and like Whenever we come across in Kirtan, especially, should make everyone chant, try to encourage everyone in a humble spirit. And, uh, this, his last meeting was middle of May 2010. And he said on that meeting that we are not doing ordinary Kirtan. This is Akhanda Kirtan Mandali. And we should be very, very serious keep always a candle and keep them going. This was the last thing. Krishna Gosht. So we should take very seriously this. His words to the heart.